Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, a ridiculous geology mystery, stellar outburst news, and I've got the harshest words for the latest climate fraud out of the AGU. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star were quite calm. Minor motions pop on the far side visible over the limb, entry of the southern coronal hole. Of course, we were awaiting a minor CME impact, some other channels online were awaiting the end of the world, and we got a moderately fast, moderately dense solar wind enhancement off the glancing blow from the CME. It also had a benign magnetic polarity during the core portion of the impact, so we have had only minor geomagnetic unrest the last couple hours. Remember, if it's going to be something much bigger, I won't be ambiguous, and you won't have to ask. But we're not done up here as we watch the departing active region. HMI is a bit jumpier than AIA, as you'll see here, and it appears to distend and lose its central umbra. You might recall yesterday we said that if the central sunspots developed in the northern region, we'd get solar flares. We've had none, and it's because the flare potential disappeared as it distended and lost central umbra as well. It's morphing fast enough, however, that it might get the spreading trigger for the flaring if it gets any bigger today. Still reason to have eyes on the north, even with the split magnetic character. Let's go to one of the reasons a third of geology is just so frustrating. So a major mystery. 1.7 billion year old sediment, burrowing holes from an animal, and definitely nothing else. But the rock is too hard to burrow in, and the animals that burrowed could not have appeared before 600 million years ago. That's more than a billion year problem there. Now, they want to say the rock did form 1.7 billion years ago, but something happened and the rock became softer and crumbly enough for creatures to burrow just 40 million years ago. And then, sediment deposit, squeezed it back into hard rock, but somehow didn't collapse the interior burrowed region, which was crumbly, remember? And so 1.7 billion to 40 million is by far the worst dating fiasco I've ever seen in geology. And it's also one of the most absurd explanations I've ever heard. How'd the rock soften? They don't know. How's it re-hardened throughout itself perfectly, but leave the burrows intact? Even the interior walls of the burrows are hardened. All that pressure on crumbly material, far more to harden it than what the animal took to burrow it. And the cavities didn't collapse? Nice try. Now you think I was frustrated a moment ago? Geez, AGU. This is one of their worst analyses ever, and I mean ever. Earthshine. Earth's albedo is decreasing. They blame global warming, but not on the smaller sea ice fraction reflecting less ice. They say global warming is causing fewer clouds, and that's where the loss of reflection can be found. First, that is not only a bad omission on their part, but every atmospheric scientist worth the salt knows that hotter Earth means more evaporation and more clouds. And this guy just saying they were wrong before is not cutting it as an explanation. I'd love to point and laugh and say, wait, they got the whole clouds, greenhouse, heat trap, albedo situation 100% backwards and upside down, and they want us to trust the rest of their climate conclusions. But what needs to be said is that those scientists were not wrong before. As long as the only factor is hotter air and water, we would get more clouds. Problem is, that's not the only variable here. Earth's weakening magnetic field is letting in more UV, especially as the ozone gets reduced. And as they mentioned in the paragraph above the highlighted one, the extrasolar energy is exactly amounting for the warming they saw over the last 20 years. Really? That extra sunlight, not extra CO2? Think about how fog or light level clouds get burned off as the sun rises up through the morning. It's the same basic idea. Our weaker magnetic field is allowing the sun to get rid of those clouds. I am not sure what this person was thinking when they wrote the article, but I am sure the authors of the actual paper did not factor in Earth's magnetic field, because I read the paper this past weekend and thought so little of it I didn't share it in the morning show. This, this is not science. Moving on to A.D. Leo, which catastrophism enthusiasts remember is like the little kid standing next to the sun in line from the galactic center. It is furiously outbursting continuously since that last super flare recorded a couple years ago, which means that all three key stars we've examined, Proxima, Barnard, and now Leo, have not only activated in a sequence right this way with the sun next in line, but they have continued their elevated outbursting over the past few years. 
Hopefully we recall that part of the disaster cycle unfolding, and the cherry on top is a fantastic doctoral thesis out calling for better investigations of all sorts of NOVA, including the recurrent NOVA, which based on the latest data, they say, are unquestionably vastly more common in the cosmos than they're credited for. For example, the Sun is a long-period recurrent micronova, about every 12,000 years. We greatly appreciate your support. The Disaster Cycle series, where more can be learned about all of those topics, including the solar micronova, is linked below today's video. As always, we've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.